There have been a lot of mixed feelings with the version 5.1 special live stream. Some people who are very big Genshin fans are very excited for the 5.1 special live stream, and that's perfectly fine. But some of us do not like what came from this live stream. And I want to point this out first before we get into the video, because it actually shows a little bit on my analytics, right? Um, I have the video pulled up and normally people don't talk about their individual analytics. Uh, but my reaction video that I posted up on Friday morning has a 69.2% like to dislike ratio. Why is that important? Well, I was very, very critical of the Genshin Impact live stream. And there was many factors to it and we'll be talking about it throughout this whole thing. Um, but I really wanted to dive into the condensed version of the live stream and talk about what happened during it. So welcome to the video. Hopefully you enjoy your stay. Like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And don't forget to check out the ever wonderful, awesome Gamer Subs, my wonderful sponsor and fantastic people. Uh, use code Tyson for 10% off. Uh, we got some good stuff in the works, man. We got the new Pixel Cups, which look absolutely amazing. And when they light up, they're fantastic. I would show you guys right now, but um, I got the little light up thingy off to the side so anyways but yes let's talk about the 5.1 special live stream right now we're gonna just go over everything that occurred during this live stream first i think that's the most important thing we always got to talk about it um and then we'll talk about my issues with the live stream because my issues might be a little bit different than other people's issues right so first things first, they gave us the banner details as you can see here. Phase one is going to be Zalonen and Chiori. Now, Zalonen is going to be kind of a debuffer slash uh, healer, it looks like, uh, with a little bit of a mix of a DPS. It's kind of crazy. So she's able to do a lot of really cool stuff in regards to, um, like, say, if you have a all geo team she's going to be able to do more damage as a geo uh damage character because of the uh three little uh gems that she has on the side and the gems correspond with the typings so if you have like all geo you're gonna have a geo debuff on the enemy which allows you to do more damage if you have electro pyro uh hydro and dendro then you're gonna be having a debuff on them with those gems which means that your dps of that typing will be able to do it so if you're going to be rocking zalonen as a geo dps then you could rock that and be able to use that geo debuff or even still use that geo debuff and use characters like ito like uh navia so on and so forth so geo team got a very good unit and i think this unit is going to be very useful in regards to not only geo teams but obviously those other typings and it's only those other four typings because cryo doesn't get the debuff from what it looks like which kind of sucks and then of course animo doesn't get the debuff now alongside her is chiori and chiori is a really really good off-field dps to have alongside your geo team so it makes sense to have both of them running together that's a really really good set of phase one banners and then we go into phase two and we have nadia or nahida not nadia pff, nahida and hu tao now I think they're pushing the burning agenda because we're in Natland and we have burning teams with, you know, obviously uh, Emily. So it makes sense to push the Hu Tao Nahida agenda. Now, Nahida is very, very good as uh, basically an applicator. So I like her for that. And then Hu Tao is the OG fire DPS character, right? So you don't, if you don't have Arlequino, it makes sense to go for Hu Tao, right? Now, Good banners. We went over the weapons. We got some new four stars coming out. The Sturdy Bone looks really, really cool. I don't know what these weapons do, but it is really cool to get some new weapons. That is a part of the banner, right? We got a new boss right here, which is another uh, mech, which I'm kind of like, I thought it was cool at first, but the more I thought about it, I'm like, we have a lot of mech bosses, right? Mechs are not new to Genshin Impact at this point. So to me, I feel like we're getting lazy with boss. Well, not really entirely lazy. Maybe that's a little too much. I think we're starting to get... What's the word I'm looking for? I don't know. Content. I think we're getting content with just putting out a boss of mech origins and just putting the legs and feet somewhere else, right? I don't know. Maybe I'm crazy. But the design looks okay. 
it looks okay. I'm I'm all I was excited at first, but I was thinking about it. I'm like, eh, I don't know. It's kind of one of those things to me. We of course got the Archon Quest announcement. It's going to be uh, Act Three and Act Four, and every and I think it's every time you complete the acts, you get 500 extra primos on top of what the quest is giving you anyway for completion. So that's cool. Always dig that. Always love getting more primos. Uh, obviously, Zalonen story quest. We get those with every new character, basically. So kudos to them for giving us that. I still need to complete Kaniches before uh, 5.0 is done. Now we have these events, but before we dive into that. We're gonna kind of go up to here really quick. Um, I don't know if the, if Games 8 covers this, um, but there is going to be exploration events as well, where you get primos for getting a certain amount of exploration, and it doesn't stop for a couple patches. So that was one of the things I saw a couple of streamers talk about, but kind of just go like miss the little, uh, oh, it's for a couple patches. This is going to last for each patch right so i think this one will last until uh if i'm if i'm understanding the concept correctly right it should last until 5.3 5.4 for exploration which means you got to get up to 80 percent in a lot of these regions to get the full uh rewards for what you're getting so now let's dive into events uh we got the chromatic ode to candies and roses it's going to be a nahida celebration uh which is cool it kind of picks up from where nahida was uh ha not really having issues but more so where nikita was outcasted before but then welcome back it was around her birthday so we get to celebrate her birthday there uh feast of pursuit earn primo gems and other awards in a special combat event uh reminiscent regimen thrill in this event travelers will go through different stages alongside other travelers in a 5.1 co-op event uh a p treasure trace 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 uh hunt and capture corroded uh Philogiston Apids. I'm terrible at reading. Uh using specialized nets that can contain the corroding power of the abyss. Uh and then 5.1 marvelous merchandise, which is pretty big. Leban comes back. We're getting some boxes of stuff. Really, really cool, right? Now, you might be thinking to yourself, there's a couple of events that they're missing that we normally get. We're gonna get into that. Let's go ahead and talk about the developer discussion updates. Uh, limited time error. Okay, so they did cover this. So we're going to get 100 extra primos uh, for specific areas, which is cool. I dig that. Free primos is free primos. One of the big things to come from this is optimize Spiral Abyss. Uh, and what's going to happen with that is like if you clear stage 11 in the previous Spiral Abyss, when you go back to the next Spiral Abyss, you'll have all the way up to 9 cleared and you'll just have to do 10, 11, and 12. Same thing for 12. If you have 12 cleared, you'll have everything up to 10 cleared, which is absolutely fantastic. It makes the time that, that you have to do Spiral Abyss that much shorter. So kudos to them for finally doing that. Uh, domain Reliquary updates in 5.1. Players can bulk up artifact chest uh, reliquaries. So basically, like, you could open up all of your uh, rewards from Spiral Abyss at one time instead of just doing one at a time. I didn't really have a problem with one at a time, personally. I didn't care. I don't think it was something that was like that big of a deal, but hey, it is what it is. Uh, crafting Bench Enhancement Progression Calculator. Basically, if you're trying to upgrade a character, it's gonna show you what all you still need for your character. So if you think you're missing something, you can go to that workbench and you'll be able to see like, okay, I'm missing uh, the Varuja Jade Gems for uh, leveling up a Dendro character or whatever it's called. Um, so that's pretty decent. Uh, Adventure Handbook Optimizations. The Trance, uh, the tr yeah, Trance, Trance, Trance. Blah, blah, blah. No main list of the Adventure Handbook will now be sorted by newest to oldest in addition all unfinished content from the commissions and guides tab will now be displayed first. Pretty dope. Uh, custom artifact filtering for characters. This is really cool. Uh, and I'm going to read this word for word first before I actually get my opinions on this. Lastly, in 5.1, players can now set artifact set plans for each character they own, making artifact settings a lot easier. Each set plan will also be saved, which means players no longer have to manually adjust each set every time they visit the artifact uh set interface what does this mean well if you're trying to build your character on let's say uh just just because i i i can't think of anything else the maiden set uh 
when you leave a like, oh, I don't have the actual like artifacts that I need for this character, right? Well, the next time you go there, it'll be sorted to the maiden set and you'll be like, okay, I just picked up where I left off. That should have been from the get-go and I love the fact that they actually finally got it done, right? So, you would look at this and be like, wow, why would you be upset about it? Couple of things. But first I wanna talk about the one thing that people were mad about that I was not mad about, right? Some people were mad that during the live stream, it was NPC characters that were talking or not really NPC characters, but it was the people behind the scenes, the ones that are doing the, um, what was it called? Regionalization. And I understand that people are upset about that. I wasn't too upset about it. I don't think that that, that was the issue in the first place when it came to this update. Um, I think that having others chime in is cool. Did they sound robotic as hell? 100%. They sounded like they didn't really like care about what was going on. They sounded like they were being held at gunpoint. However, the problem with this update has nothing to do with them in my personal opinion. And my issues are very, very small, right? If you look at the grand scheme of Genshin Impact, right? My issues are very, very small. But I think it needs to be talked about. During this, and I, I can't remember if the last update live stream that they did this to or not, but there was nothing talked about when it came to double rewards. What do I mean by this? Well, there's, you know how we have the relic event, or not relic, but artifact events where they double because like you're going to do the artifact events and you can get double the rewards? Or not artifacts, uh, ley lines. Ley lines and so on, or uh, books. Nothing was said about that. Nothing. Not the artifacts, but like the ley line book, ley lines and the talent books. Nothing was said about double reward events happening during this patch. And it could be that they're still going to do it. But normally they talk about it and they didn't do that. So it, it has me worried. It has me worried that they're not going to do that. Not only that, but they did not do a gift of Odyssey this time. And yes, they don't do a gift of Odyssey every update. They're not Honkai Star Rail. They don't have to. But it's the fact that now you have so many games fighting for your attention. And now you're just relying on an uh, on an IP. And for me, I've seen this before. There's a reason why I was so upset about Sword Art Online Memory Defrag. It had a lot of possibilities, but they only relied on an IP. There wasn't a lot going on with Memory Defrag in regards to rewarding its players, or at least from what I saw. And that's why Memory Defrag suffered and a lot of its stuff. Dokkan Battle rewards its players while also having a strong IP. I think that Genshin Impact could take a little bit from somebody who's been doing this for nine years. Genshin, you're on your fourth anniversary going into fifth year, right? I think you should really take a look at what you're doing and reward your players. Now, for those of you Genshin crazy people out there that think I'm way too like wanting of like stuff that's just like this, I hate to say it, but other games are doing it. So why is it a problem? Now, again, again, I could be wrong. They could do the double events. They could do the double events for ley lines. They could do the double events for the talent books and everything like that. And I think if they do do that and they didn't announce it, I still think it's a miss because people talk about those events all the time they do whether you whether you agree with me or not it's it's a fact that i've seen it on twitter talked about multiple times where people have brought it up and said god thank god for the double books otherwise i wouldn't have been able to max out my you know arlecchino or max out you know my waifu stuff like that so it's there people want that and it's a very easy event to do so it's not like you know oh if we get rid of it, it's whatever. No, it is something and you should be wanting to do it. And the gift of Odyssey, like, get you, come on. We have, we have so many characters. You can't just give 
a couple summons every now and again in regards to Gift of Odyssey. Like, for real. I think that, honestly, most Genshin fans... And I and before anybody goes, Teister's a tourist to Genshin Impact. Bitch, I've been playing since day one. Every single day I've been playing Genshin Impact. I'm just saying. Genshin could reward more. Now, Hoyoverse in general is good with their games. Honkai Star Rail and ZZZ are great when it comes to rewarding their player base, at least in my opinion. I just wish that Genshin would follow suit. That's just my thing. So, anyways, y'all, like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you think about this. Uh, don't forget to check out Gamer Subs. Use code Tystra for ten percent off. It, I, it's just the right thing to do, man. Look at the look at this TwitchCon cup, man. Fantastic, official TwitchCon cup. I love these designs. So, ah. Uh. Anyways, I'm off to play some Wuwa. Anyways, love you guys to death. And as always, we'll catch you in that next video. Please take care and be safe.